Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what we did in a previous video is we used the Pythagorean triangles to set up this grid that we're gonna use as a graph, right? And we use the same technique as we did in previous video where we use the Pythagorean triangles to set up a grid to do our, um, you know, to generate the uh, 10 by 10 multiplication table because it's something extremely important that we really need to learn before we can progress in mathematics. It's one of the first things you need to learn to learn math. And then since we had to grade up, we also learn how to play a 10 by 10 math puzzle pattern recognition game. And uh, we ended up uh, a few months ago, we ended up doing a live stream about three sessions live stream of playing that game as well right so we use that technique for setting up that grid to set up this graph and what we're going to do right now is we're going to put a couple of graphs on here a couple of tables on here data set from a couple of tables okay we're going to use this side to represent the data for one of the graphs and we're going to use the other side to represent the data on for the other data set right and the horizontal line is going to be our timeline usually horizontal when it comes to investing finance and a lot of mathematics time usually goes on the x-axis because the x-axis is our independent variable because you know you really can't control time right so time makes sense for it to be on the x-axis be independent and in our situation right now we're going to look at personal finance investing parking your money somewhere and what the rate of return for your investment would have been for two different we'll call them asset classes right now but basically two different places you could have parked your money right been invested in for a certain period of time right and what we're going to do is take a look at what happened with the value of those investments or those places you parked your money over time okay and this is really one of the most important things that right now you have to keep in mind is what the definition of an asset class is what the definition of money is what the definition of currency is and how collectibles and different types of asset classes and how inflation comes into play and all this jazz right and we talked a fair bit about this stuff in previous videos when it came to personal finance where we defined the term money and currency which is extremely important for what we're about to talk about okay so if you want to have a good overview of where we're coming from uh, to do this analysis to look at this data those are two places that you really have to take a look at what the definition of money is and we've talked about an article which defined the term money which is basically any collectible any asset class and what the definition of currency is and we've you know there's a few criteria required uh, for something to become a currency right but what we're going to do is basically right now I what I ended up doing is taking a look at two data sets okay one of them is US dollars relative to Canadian dollars and the other data set I looked at was US dollars relative to Bitcoin okay now what we're going to do we're going to take a uh, sort of a time stamp time period for US dollars versus Canadian dollars and take a look at what happened with the exchange rate between US dollars and Canadian dollars or a certain period of time and we're going to do the same thing for Bitcoin we're going to take a look at how the price of Bitcoin varied relative to US dollars over a certain period of time okay and what we'll do I think we'll put Canadian dollars on this side and Bitcoin on the other side okay and just to let you know just uh, just so you get an appreciation whenever you're doing a comparison when it comes to anything in mathematics or anything in life really but specifically what we're talking about when it comes to investing what you want to do is make sure that the two different things you're talking about when it comes to if you want to invest in something that they're compatible right they you know 
comparing these two, two things actually has meaning. And when it comes to Canadian dollars, let me give you some of the data why we're looking at this because uh, it's important to appreciate that these two data sets are compatible, right? You can take a look at these two things and see, you know, try to interpret for yourself what they represent, okay? Now, Canadian dollars have been around for 160 years, right? The first time the Canadian dollar was defined, it was Canadian pounds, I believe, before that, but Canadian dollars were defined was 1858, right? If you take 1858 to 2018 right now, that's 160 years, okay? time period now what we're going to do we're going to look at a 10-year segment for that data set and what we're going to do we're going to look at the year from the US US dollars to Canadian exchange rate from 1998 to 2008 okay so if we do that take a look at a 10-year period out of a lifespan of canadian dollars that have been around that comes out to 10 divided by 160 which is about 6.25 six and a quarter percent of the lifespan of canadian dollars that's been around right because whenever you're investing in something there's two time functions two time factors you have to consider what is the lifespan of whatever it is you're investing in and what is the lifespan that you're comfortable with being invested in whatever category you're putting your money in, you're parking your money in, right? So you have to take into consideration the lifespan of the asset of whatever system you're investing your money in. And you have to take a look at the time span, your own personal time clock of how long you want to be invested in something, right? And I mentioned this previously in the, in the introduction video when we talked about personal finance personal finance is very as the name implies personal what I invest in may be completely different than what you might invest in what someone else might invest in the time period that I'm looking at to put money in and take money out may be completely different than the time period that you might be putting money in and taking money out right ideally what you want to do is not have everything in only one time period right that's one mistake a lot of people do and one of the advice that personal finance advisors give people give to people is you know don't don't worry about you know timing the markets or timing your buy just put money into the markets right to me that is a ridiculous statement and whenever i talk to someone that starts talking in that general talking point sent I sort of start poking the hornet's nest and trying to make them appreciate that my lifespan is limited right from the time I invest to the time I pull out if you're investing for example in the stock market one of the things people say is oh just buy in don't worry about it the stock market will always go up right but that's a fallacy right because your lifespan is limited the stock market has been around over 100 years now are you comfortable with parking your money in something and waiting to get a return out a hundred years where it's gone up or are you comfortable with parking your money somewhere where the asset class might drop for 10 years and it'll take another five years for it to be more than what you invested in where you're going to be invested for 15 to 20 years right so please keep this in mind timing matters and we've talked about time before in previous videos as well right so we're going to take a look at a 10-year period in the lifespan of Canadian dollars and that comes out to 6.25 percent of the lifespan that we're looking at of the data set we're looking at when it comes to the Bitcoin data set Bitcoin has been around for around nine years right some people consider it to be a currency some people consider it to be an asset money so Bitcoin has been around for nine years we're going to take a look at a 2.5 month lifespan of Bitcoin what the price fluctuation of Bitcoin was relative to US dollars and that comes out to about 2.3 percent of the lifespan of Bitcoin okay so what we're going to do right now is I've printed off the tables and and the graphs so we're going to translate this stuff here and take a look at the rate of return 
for each of the different classes, for each of the different places you could have parked your money over a certain period of time. So let's put Canadian dollars on here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put Canadian dollars in pink. Okay, take a look at this. I got a nice little pink tax here that we're going to put on here as a data points. I've got nine data points for each one, right? As the table indicates. So what we're going to do is I want to put this here. I want to bring out my felt pen. Okay. And we're going to put the Canadian dollars. Oops, let's do this one. I want to make sure we present this properly so I don't want to make any mistakes. So I did sort of print, print these off on paper that way. We're not doing it uh, uh, just randomly. So what we're going to do is, this is the scale we're going to use. For Canadian dollars, we're going to go relative to exchange rate. Canadian dollars relative to US dollars. We're going to go from 0 0.5, 50 cents, right? 0.5 dollars all the way to dollar 90 cents, okay? So since we're going to do this in pink, let me write these down here. Let me put the tack down. So we're going to go 0 0.5, and we'll talk about what these numbers mean. Uh, okay, hopefully that's coming out okay for you guys. 0 0.7. Oops. Oh yeah, these guys flip. These, uh, these stickies that I have, for some reason, they've set them up so they flip, so I have to flip them all uh, around every time I write it. I gotta remember that. 0 0.7, right? That way they're pointing in the same direction. Okay. Our next point is 0 0.9. Oops, let's make nine bigger. 0 0.9. Line this up so it looks okay. Here, 0 0.9. Let's give it a little gap the way it's doing it. Make it all symmetrical. Huh? <laughs> Playing around with these things. 0 0.9. So we're going up 0.2 every time, right? So we're going to go point 0. Point, or 1.1. 1. 1. 1.1 1. 1. Right. yeah let's put this guy here oh, let's put it there 1.1 1. 1. and then 1.3 which direction is this difficult to do 1.3 1.3 and 1.5 1.5, right? 1.5. 1 1.7. 1 1.7. And 1.9. Okay. 1.9. Now what we'll do is uh, we'll put the scale on the other side as well for Bitcoin, okay? The value of Bitcoin. So that's our Canadian dollars and Bitcoins, we're gonna, again, we have nine points and we're gonna use blue tax and blue this. So Bitcoin, we're gonna go just so they're comparable, this was 0.5, right, dollars. This was 1.9 dollars. We're gonna put $5,000 there and $19,000 in the top, okay? So let's just do that and then we'll start talking about this information. 5,000, oops, wrote it the wrong way. I want the sticky to be in the other direction. Five thousand. Five thousand. 
7,000. I can't remember to flip this constantly. 7,000. That's coming up for you guys. Yeah, we're still on the board. That's good. 9,000. Eleven thousand. Thirteen thousand. My fives always look trippy, make this look legit. <laughs> 15,000. Did I put it on the right way? Yeah, I did. Nice. 15,000. 17,000. Got a little smudge on that. 17,000. 000. Let's remove the 15,000. Might as well make it clean, right? 15,000. 19,000, right? And whenever you're setting up, oops, that was messy. And whenever you're setting up graphs, if you're doing a comparison, then you want the scales to make sense, right? You do, oh, I put it on the wrong way again. <laughs> I want the sticky to be the other direction. Pick. Here, let's throw that over there. 19,000. 19,000, right? So this is 19,000. Okay. Hopefully they'll stick there. Sands, let's do this. Where's the lid for this? Okay. Now, the time frame that we have, that we're going to look at the data set, right, that we have available in the table. Let me bring out the table here. Okay. Now, for Canadian dollars, for Canadian dollars, we're going to go from October 1998. Actually, 1998 is going to be around the year, okay, because these scales are going to be, this is going to be 1995, because to fit them all in the same sort of crunched up frame, we're not starting off exactly on the y-axis uh, at the zero point here, right? So 1998, we're going to start around here, and we're going to go to 2008, which is going to be about here, right? This is going from 1995 to 2000 and, um, 1995 to 2009, and we're taking a 10-year span in that, right? For the Bitcoin, the data set, the timeline, we're going from early December 2017 to February 2018, okay? And the time span, we're basically going from November to March when it comes to our axes, right? But basically, we're taking a two and a half month period for Bitcoin, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is we'll put that tick markers here for Canadian dollars, okay? And we'll put our data on and we'll put the lines through the data so you see what the Canadian dollars, what relative to US dollars have done, right? So let's put the Canadian dollars up. 
Should we put this in pink again? Sure, let's put this in pink. And Canadian dollars. So I don't mess this up. I have the axes set up here, right? And between each tick is two years and nine months. That's the span between here and here, here and here, and here and here and here and here. Okay. So this is going to be October 1995. October, October, 95, okay. Then we're going July, 98. July, 98. Then we're going April 2001. Okay. I guess I should have put 1995 eh? We'll just keep it like this. April. April 2001. Okay. Then we got January 2004. January zero four, and then we're going October two thousand and six. So October oh six, right? And the last one is July two thousand and nine. July. July 09. Okay, let me put my pen back down again. And let's put this up. July 2009. Okay, that's our pink, pink guys. Let's put them there. So what we need to do now is put our points on here. So we're going to look at the table right now to do that. Okay, so for the table, our first data point is going to be October 5th, 1998, okay? And that puts us, actually that puts us, that's 98, July, October is going to be on this side, right? And on October 5th, 1998, one US dollar got you a dollar 55 Canadian, okay? So one US dollar in when was the time October 1998 which comes out to I have the thing set up here too so it's about here got you a dollar 55 Canadian okay so we're right here approximately okay January 21st 2000 one US dollar got you a dollar 44 Canadian right Dollar forty four Canadian. One US dollar October sorry January two thousand. January two thousand. That's two thousand and one. January two thousand is around here. So we're talking about here, April. It got you a dollar forty four. So that's dollar thirty, that's dollar fifty five, dollar forty is in the middle, so a little bit above. Right? January 10th, 2000, 2002, one US dollar got you a dollar 60 Canadian, right? So January 2000, 2002, my apologies, January 2002, so that's 2001, that's January 2004, so we're around here, okay? And you got a dollar 60. Canadian. So we're up here right in the middle. Right? Good money. Now, in June 2003, one US dollar got you a dollar 35 Canadian. So June 2003, that's January 2004. Did we do it too much? I think this guy should be over here. 
That was January 2002. So this guy should be more over here. Okay. If we're going to keep the perspective legit, all right? Uh, keep it to scale. Okay. So June 2003 got you a dollar 35. So that's January. So it's a little bit behind, below here and it got you a dollar 35. So these are dollar 30. So we're like down here, right? Approximately. In May 2004, it got you a dollar 40 Canadian. One US dollar got you a dollar 40 Canadian. May 2004. So here's January 2004. May is going to be around here. It got you a dollar 40. So we're back up to here in the middle. Okay. In November 2004, one US dollar got you a dollar 21 Canadian. Okay. So one US dollar, November 2004. November, October 2004, January, February, March. So we're still around here, right? So dollar 21. So we drop. So here is dollar 10, dollar 30, dollar 20 is in the middle. So we're about in the middle, right? So 2004, so we're going to be around here and it dropped. Oops, went into the wall too deep. Okay. In May 2006, June, July, October, May 2006, okay, one US dollar got you dollar 11 Canadian. May 2006, so this is October 2006, so we're still below here got you a dollar 11 so here's dollar 10 so we're basically on the line so we're going to be around here okay in november 2007 okay so that's 2006 november 2007 puts us you know about here in the middle and that got you 94 cents canadian so one dollar us getting you one dollar canadian that would be par value now one dollar us only got you 94 cents canadian right so your canadian dollars were worth more than us dollars right so us dollars was doing a serious drop and that was november 2007 94 so we're down here okay this is 90 and the mark is going to be around here so this is 90 we'll go across we'll go across a little bit above here Right. And in December 2008, $1 US got you $1.30 Canadian. Pop back up, right? Elastic band. It snapped back up. So $1.30 in December 2008. So $1.30, where are we? We're up here. So it bounced back up to around here okay that's some serious movement for a currency right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this put a string through these and connect them all up that way you see the trend the way it's going it doesn't look like just random data right so let's do this so we start off here right let's take this over Push it in, lock it in. Let's see, we'll go one more time. All right? Oh, this is coming out, coming out. Oh, it locked in, good. Let's tie it up. Maybe that's the better way to do it. Okay. Comes here, goes there, comes here, goes there, comes here, goes there comes here and then goes here okay hopefully that comes out okay maybe we'll make it a double double it up so you see it better right make it darker okay now that is the trend that exchange rate us dollars to canadian dollars look like for 
a 10 year period because we're going from October 1998 to December 2008, right? So from here to there is around a 10 year period. Okay, so let me bring out my X-Acto knife, if I can find it. Here it is, let's cut this, and then we'll tie it up. Let's give us a little slack. Okay. Let's tie this up here. Okay, that's that. Let's cut off the extras. But again, this doesn't stop here, right? The Canadian dollar and US exchange rate just continues on. Okay, we're just looking at a 10 year lifespan. Okay, that's the Canadian dollars versus US dollars. Let's put on the same graph US dollars versus Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin. Okay, and what we're going to do is let's put our timeline line on the axis as well, because for Canadian dollars from here to here is 10 years. For Bitcoin, we're only going to look at a two and a half month period, right? So our graph here, if we're using the same colors for Bitcoin as we did for the Y axis, right? As for the X axis, let's put this guy here. This is going to be November 21st, 2017. So I'm going to write this down because it matters. We're going to have different, uh, are we? Yeah, we are going to have different months, same month appearing twice. So we have to put the, the days in there as well because it's a shorter time span, right? So 21 November 2017. We'll put 2017 here as well, okay? This is November 21st, 2017. And then we're going to go December 11th, 2017. So 11 December, 11 December 2017. Okay. We're going to go December. Uh, 31st 2017 so the the span between each one of these is 20 days right for Canadian dollars it was two years and nine months for Bitcoin is going to be 20 days right so 11 uh, we did the 11 31st December 2017 Okay. Uh, next one is going to be January 20th, 2018. So 20 Jan 2018. Okay. Next one is going to be February 9th, 2018. 9 February 2018. Oops, I wrote it backwards again. Oops. Throw that over there. 9 February. 9 February 2018. 9 February 2018. And the last one is going to be March 1st, 2018. 1 March. 2018. Let's put this, put the cap back on the pen again. And throw this on here. Okay. And since we're, did these guys, the stickies with blue, we'll put blue for these guys as well. So let me grab the table and read these things off okay so the first data point we have is december 7th 2017 so this this is december 11th 2017 so december 7th is going to be if this is a 
20 day cycle right in the middle is going to be 10 days five days two days beforehand right so on December 7th 2017 one Bitcoin cost seventeen thousand nine hundred dollars right so seventeen thousand seventeen thousand is over there nine hundred dollars so that's around eighteen thousand so it's almost in the middle right I'm gonna put that guy there actually for this one um, because I'm going to use a different color string not a different color but a different style of string is sort of a like a velcro I, we tried this out in the previous video to see what it was it was like and it was fantastic I like the stuff this uh, stuff I got from the gardening store from a sort of a uh, what do you call it uh, 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 sort of place where you get supplies for construction and stuff like this and they have a sort of gardening section right but it doesn't bend easily so I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna go uh, from one to the other we're gonna do little segments and attach them so it's gonna look like this but we're gonna use the tacks these guys to hold the thing in place okay so the first one is we got here so let me cut this off I'm just gonna Take a whole bunch and cut it off. Make sure we have enough, All right? And let's cut this. This is great stuff. I can't believe I've never found this before. <laughs> it's like a beautiful toy. So let's put this here, right? So we're gonna put a, our thing through it, right? And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put the next tack in. When is our next tack? Our next data point is on December 9th, 2017, one Bitcoin costs $15,178, right? So December, December 9th, so let's find out where that is. This is 20 days. That's December 9th, is it? Oh, it is too, so it's really close. So we're right, right here. Hold on a second, that's December 9th. Oh yeah, two days later. So that was December 7th. Oops, I need this to be over here a little bit. I'm putting a lot of holes in the in the walls, eh? And then December 9th, it came down to just two days later, it dropped two thousand five hundred dollars, right? So fifteen thousand, oops, fifteen thousand something dollars. $15,200 would be around here, and that's December 9th, goes to here, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this. Where was this? Over there? I'm gonna cut this here, all right? And then I'm gonna attach this here as well, and we're gonna put our line through, or tack through both of them. And then where is this guy going afterwards? This guy's shooting up, so I'm gonna, because this is Velcro, I can't really twist it, so I'm gonna point it in the right direction. Okay, point it in the right direction, December 17th, 19,000. So we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna put a, the tack through it, okay? Now on December 17th, 2017, December 17th, so this is December 11th, that's December 31st, that's 20 days separation, in the middle is going to be 10 days so six days so we're about here we're about here all right one bitcoin costs nineteen thousand one hundred forty one dollars so we'll just call it nineteen thousand one hundred dollars so this thing shot up to here okay to about here so i'm going to cut it here right so we're going to cut it right there And we're gonna, the next one came down again, pretty sharply. So we're gonna put it here, and we're gonna put a little, our tack through it, okay? The next data point we have is December 22nd, it dropped, and one Bitcoin cost $13,800, okay? So $13,800, $13,800, Fourteen thousand would be around here, so it's a little bit lower than that, and it's on December twenty-second. 
So in the middle, if you add 10 days, that's December 19th. December 22nd is going to be around here, so it's coming to here. Okay? So let's put a little tick mark there, and let's cut this. How much was it? 13,800. Oh, yeah, we're going a little bit too much, so let's bring it here. We'll cut it there. Okay? And let's bring attack. And the next one shot up again. Okay? So... That guy comes here, we're gonna go here. And what was the next data point? Let's, before we put this in, we'll, put the, we'll try to figure out where the next data point goes, right? The next data point is December 26, and it was 16,000. So December 31st is here. So December 26 is still on this side of this line, right? And it was 16,000, right? 16,000, so 16,000 is up here. So we're gonna, tag this and then we're going to put this guy in right let's put this guy in 16,000 a little bit over oh right there so we're going to cut this guy here and when was the next one next one is 12,000 almost 13,000 on December 30th so it's just right there again still behind this line so what we're going to do is i'm going to remove this guy i'm going to make this velcro go sharper even move up even right i'm going to put that guy there and then on december 30th it came down to thirteen thousand. december 30th thirteen thousand. so it's coming back right down again right right there okay so we're going to put this in. And we need another tack. 13,000 right about there. We're going to cut this. And then what do we got? January 17th, 11,000. January 17th. So it's brown here. 11,000 is down here. Right? So this thing drops. Goes from there to there. Right? So let's put a little our tack here. Okay. Kick it down to here, 11,000. Yeah, make sure we got the right amount. And then it drops again. February 5th, it goes down to almost 7,000. So we're going to cut it here. Let's make sure we got the right location. January 17th was 11,000. Yeah, about here. Okay, so we're going to cut this guy. Bring a little tack. And the next one goes down to February 5th. So that's February 9th. So February 5th is going to be around here. It dropped down to 6,000. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the drop there, right? So it came down to here. Okay. So it goes from there and lands us. Let's make sure we got... A nice angle on it February 5th no February 5th not February 7th February 5th that's 20 days so yeah four days before so it's around here okay so it's going to be around here let's do this like that right so that's a good angle so let's hit that there Let's bring this guy, oops, this guy here. Right. And then the next one shot up again. So I don't think I cut enough. We're going to need more of the string. So fifth is going to be here. So I'm going to cut this here. And where's our Velcro? We get the sample of Velcro again. We need, how much do we need? Oh, we need a little bit chunk. we got to go up here. So we're gonna go, 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 go. That should do it, All right? Let's do this. So we got this guy here. And on February 20th, it went up to 11,500. So February 20th, that's February 9th, 10 days is in the middle. It went up to 11,400. So we wanna be around here, right? So if we attach this here, 
the angle that we want is like that. Cool. So let's throw this here. And let's throw this guy here, which is February 20th. A little bit longer, 11,400 is right there. Now we're gonna cut this guy. Oop, save that. Let's cut that. Come on. Much easier doing it with ropes, right? Much easier. But I do like this, this Velcro stuff, look at this. All right, you can make little loops, pull it off, cool. So what do we got, what do we got? These are the two graphs we're gonna look at, right? This is Bitcoin relative to US dollars. This is Canadian dollars relative to US dollars, or US dollars relative to Canadian dollars, right? Now, they sort of follow the same trend, right? They start off high, they do, starts off high, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes down, goes down, pops up, right? Same trend. Now, what you can do when it comes to looking at different places you can park your money, one formula you can use is return on investment, ROI, right? And it's basically a concept of how much money did you make, right? Now for us, both of these guys, depending, if you bought up here, they both dropped here. If you bought here, you made money in both of them, both cases, right? And let me show you what the formula is to calculate, to do this calculation. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, I wrote it down here. I'm gonna pop it up. I don't know if it's gonna show up or not. It's too far, right? And my handwriting's not the best, right? So I'll definitely, for this video, we'll definitely pop up the formula in the edited version of this video, right? But as before, we are streaming this live. So for those of you watching live right now, this is the formula that we have. It's called return on investment, right? And basically, you know, there's different different ways of calculating this, but I like this formula where it's just one fraction on top of, and you know, one fraction multiplied by 100, which is just basically your 100%, right? Basically what the formula is, is return minus investment, subtract those, divided by how much you invested, multiplied by 100, or whatever you gained minus whatever you spent, divided by whatever you spent times 100, which gives you, converts it to percentages, right? In terms of mathematics, basically is, the way you can think about this is, because you can use this for anything, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be the terminology that we use here, you know, return minus investment divided by investment or gain minus spend divided by spend. And there's different terminologies you can use in economics to represent that. But in terms of mathematics, the only thing we're gonna do is go point B, minus point A divided by point A times 100, which gives us the, uh, converts it to percentages for us, right? So let's do a little bit of calculation here to try to figure out what the return on investment would be if we bought into Bitcoin at its peak and Canadian dollars and, or US dollars, I guess, park your money in Canadian dollars, right? And take a look at what would happen, what the drop would be compared from here to there and from there to there. And they're quite, they're, you know, they look exaggerated, but they're compatible, right? Especially if you consider that for some, well, Canadian dollars is just currency, is fiat currency, right? And based on interest rates and inflation and stuff, it just depreciates over value. The, um, what you can buy with it gets less and less as time progresses, right? So you never really wanna be 
invest it in a currency you don't want to park your money over a long period of time in a currency you want to be rolling that over into certain types of investments certain types of assets certain types of whatever it is that you're doing right or even in yourself right if you held on to your money saying thinking that price of something if you're trying to get educated or you're trying to take some kind of course and stuff if they're going to come down over a long period of time then you're fooling yourself because the prices of everything are going to continuously go up relative to fiat currencies right and for some bitcoin is considered to be a currency for some is considered to be an asset class right so we're doing a comparison between two things that are considered to be in the same sort of class structure okay so let's bring out our pen let's do here we'll stick these are stickies as well by the way so that's not bad so let's put our stickies here okay hopefully this will come out if not we'll do a pop-up in the edited video uh, for it to show up and we'll bring the the data points here so let's take the peak here for Canadian dollars and compare it to the trough here and see what the return on investment would have been right now keep in mind this is the exchange rate how much one US dollar would have got you in Canadian dollars so the value of US dollars would have been depreciating right one US dollar would have got you dollar 60 Canadian and at this point one US dollar would have got you 94 cents Canadian so the value of US dollars over this time span has dropped right so as the formula you know we laid out it's just point a or sorry point b minus point a divided by point a right so if you want let's put the actually let's do this let's put the values here so you see what those data points are right so the data points are this canadian dollar at its peak this was dollar 60. right not canadian dollar but us dollar got you dollar 60 canadian right so us should i put this on would you even see it here's a dollar 60 but basically us to oops cad they usually write it as right so let's write it out this is backwards again so let's do it this way so us to cad one dollar got you 160 okay so this would have been 160. okay that's point a for our formula okay if you want i'll stick this up so you see this as well and then we'll take it off once we put the points on there right this point here 94 cents so again us to cad us dollars to cad one to 0 0.94 okay and that's that point here okay so what we can do now is use this formula point b minus point a divided by point a times 100 that's your return on investment right so point b 0 0.94 minus 1.6 over 1.6 times 100 okay we're gonna use the calculator okay so the calculator we're gonna go 0.94 minus 1.6 is 0.66 and we're gonna divide that by 1.6 which is going to give us 0.4125 multiplied by 100 is 41.25 percent drop right so 41.25 percent but it's negative it was gave you a negative rate of return okay so 
what this means during this period the US dollar US dollars relative to Canadian dollars lost 41% of its value of its buying power that's a serious drop okay that was a time when we were having uh, there was major oh yeah by the way these aren't the 2017 so let me take these off so you know what the time frames are I was just looking at these going oh no these are the wrong dates on here right so let me put these like this and then we'll put them back on for the Bitcoin of course right so let's put these back on that way you get a full visual of what's going on right and this right we're going to put these back on again for Bitcoin okay so the time span here was this date was when was this date this was 2002 to 2008 over a six-year period US dollars relative to Canadian dollars lost 41% of their buying power huge okay and this was a time here let me put the dates on here again so you get a nice appreciation of what that means right so this was 2002 2002 right to 2008 and this was during the some people call it the financial crisis if you've been watching my videos you'll know I refer to it as the biggest scam in human history right so this is 2008 during a six-year period US dollars lost 41% of the value relative to Canadian dollars Wow and then they pop up back up again okay now again timing matters if you happen to buy US dollars in 2008 with Canadian dollars you did good your money went up right if you want to figure out how much money what your return on investment would have been for that let's do that one too okay let's throw that back on let's put another sticky on top of here all right I hope these come up if they don't we'll do a pop-up for it okay one US dollar got you a dollar 30 Canadian right so this is a dollar 30 130 one got you 130 and this was 94 cents right so our formula is point B minus point A point B minus point A let's pull this out again point B minus point A divided by point A times 100 so point B 1.3 minus 0 0.94 divided by 0 0.94 times 100 let's do this calculation to figure out what that rate of return is right if we punch this in 130 one point sorry not 130 1.3 minus 0.94 is 0.36 divided by 0.94 you got it gives you 0.3829 which is basically 38 point well 38.3 percent return positive 38.30 percent return right so just imagine if you were investing in something and you sold right in here one US dollar got you a dollar 60 Canadian right just imagine if you sold your US dollars here grabbed a whole bunch of Canadian dollars right you wouldn't drop 41% right you grabbed a whole bunch of Canadian dollars here and then here you realized or assumed thought by looking at the data realizing that this was a serious drop over a six-year period 
currencies usually don't drop 41%, not, uh, what do you call it, reserve currencies of the world, because U.S. dollar is the reserve currency of the world, drop 41%. You thought, hey, maybe it's a good time to dump my Canadian dollars, because Canadian dollars have gone up a fair bit in value, and bought U.S. dollars, and if you did that, you would have gained 38%. That's a pretty good return. And the time frame for this was, this was, this was 2002, this was 2008, right? That was a six-year period, right? And the last data point for that was 2008. Well, was it 2008? Oh, my bad. This was 2007. Sorry, gang. So this was 2008. Looking at far at the table gives me the wrong info. So this was 2007. 2007 right right here right 2007 so your money dropped 41 percent in five years and in one year bounced back 38 percent positive right negative positive wow huge for currency movements and there are people that play currencies right I don't know if they play currencies for five-year period I've never done it but there are people who flip currencies on a regular basis okay now what we're gonna do is figure out the rate of return for Bitcoin relative to US dollars so let's throw these back on again that way we have the right scale going across All right? and this is over a two and a half month period right so more volatile, right? But right now, Canadian dollars have been around for 160 years, right? Bitcoin has only been around in existence for about nine years. So two and a half months out of nine years is a legitimate comparison for Canadian dollars, 10 years out of 160 years, how long Canadian dollars have been around, right? So let's put another sticky up and do the same thing okay we'll do the same thing and where's our blue blue post-its oops oh no don't fall look at this stuff this stuff is crazy pretty fun <laughs> the toys we get at stationery stores right so take a look at this uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin at the peak it was $19,141 we're just gonna call it $19,000 okay $19,000 in December uh, 17th 2017 $19,000 okay $19,000 up here Hopefully that's still showing up. Yep, you can see up there. The bottom was, what was the bottom? 6,955, we'll call it $7,000, okay? $7,000, right here. Oops, let's make it stick better, okay? So we wanna figure out the return on investment here. Again, it's negative, right, because it dropped if you bought park your money in bitcoins you would have lost more than 50 percent right but let's figure out what exactly that loss is so our formula is point b minus point a divided by point a times 100 to convert it into percentages right so we're going to go 7,000 minus 19,000 divided by 19,000 times 100 let's do this what does that give us 7,000 minus 19,000 is 12,000 12, right divided by 19,000 there's a hokey pokey calculator I got right so it's 0 0.631516 so basically we're gonna call it 63% but 
since we've taken everything else to two decimal places, we'll take this to two decimal places too. So 63, we do percent straight up, negative 63.16%. Did I put percent on here too? Oh, I gotta put percent on here. I think I put percent on here, I did. But I forgot the percent sign on the second one, right? So percent, okay. So if you bought Bitcoin at its peak, on what's the date on here on december 17 2017 you lost 60 percent of the value of your asset or currency depreciation return on investment was negative in uh, by by february 2018 so december december 17th to february so january 17th so in a month and a half month and 20 days or so you lost 63 percent of your value right now what would happen if you invested here and sold it here and that was february 2018 right now what was that value let's write down that value that value is eleven thousand four hundred eleven thousand four hundred Eleven thousand four hundred, right here. Okay, and if we're going to calculate that, let's put another sticky here. Do our calculation. Right. And our calculation is going to be. Let's bring our calculator to point B, point B minus point A divided by point A times one hundred. Point B, 11,400 minus 7,000 divided by 7,000 times 100. Right. 11,400 minus 7,000 is 4,400 divided by 7,000 is going to be 62.86%. So plus 62.86%, right? And again, you could have done the same thing with, if you, you know, have, were invested in Bitcoin and you can take a look at the chart of Bitcoin. And we've talked a fair bit about cryptocurrencies in previous videos. I made a video letting you know uh, my history with Bitcoin when I got involved with it in 2010, 2011. Uh, and we've done two other videos, at least two other videos, just specifically related to cryptocurrencies and my take on cryptocurrencies and uh, why they are, what their effects are going to be in our current economic system, specifically related to blockchain technology which is sort of taking uh finance and automating and then we talked a fair bit about this right i'm trying to summarize you know two or three hours of videos into just one sentence it's not working out well but if you want to get a feel for what cryptocurrencies are you can take a look at those videos but if you realized assumed speculated that if you look at this chart this is starting off at around eighteen thousand, right when cryptocurrency started nine years ago, you could have bought a lot of Bitcoins for $1, right? Right now, one Bitcoin, well, not right now, at this point, one Bitcoin was costing you $18,000. Like huge, exponential, on a logarithmic scale even, right? So if you decided to liquidate your Bitcoin assets, your Bitcoins at 19000 you could have bought back at 17,000 or even here and you would have still made a little bit more money right you wouldn't have seen the drop even buying here if you bought here again you would have had a positive 62 percent return right so you can jump around any type of investment any type of asset class any type of system you want to enter in park your money in the most important thing you have to consider really 
the one thing that you have to consider whenever you're investing something is time and time is something we've talked about before not specifically related we have talked about it in uh, personal finance and stuff like this but we've talked about it in other videos ASMR math videos just trying to conceptualize what time is right and it's an extremely important concept was one place that a lot of people don't consider uh, when it comes to investing their time their money their resources into a system into a project okay I really wanted to sort of talk about this I think the two data sets are compatible they're legit to do a comparison on and uh, they've fluctuated a fair bit during the periods we've picked and relative to the life lifespan they've they've existed they're about the same in the same range one digit uh, lifespan of these assets these currencies these systems uh, that are in play right now okay and keep this in mind return on investment the formula is so simple it's ridiculously simple it's just point B minus point A all of it divided by point A the times 100 where you end up minus where you started divided by where you started times 100 to convert to a percentage okay and we'll talk a lot more about this type of data this type of concept and investing and take a look at different asset systems asset classes and we've talked a little bit about this in personal finance and economics as well where we looked at the different types of places you could have parked your money over an extended period of time may it be wall street stock market may it be housing may it be salaries may it be comic books may it be cryptocurrencies and what the rate of inflation was what devaluation is and stuff like this right uh, but i thought this was a little um, this was a good little exercise for us to do to uh, take a look at uh, how we could do a comparison between two different types of systems and get a feel for what's going on and how each system behaves and they behave very similar right very similar depending on your time frame of course okay that's about it for now i'll see you guys in the next video